2023 Heat Media Day, and uh, I've got Kevin Love sitting right across from me. Kevin, this is a little embarrassing for me because people have told me uh, with my it's, beard, it's the beard. Yeah. yeah, that uh, <laughs> you're my doppelganger. Or I yeah. guess I would be your doppelganger. I, I need to probably take it a little bit closer on the side. Just to, you know, <laughs> people always talk about the gray hair, but I'm kind of <laughs> looking at it now. So. Yeah, I'm I'm getting there, man. I'm uh, I'm about to turn 30, and uh, yeah, yeah it'll I'm, creep up on you fast. Yeah. <laughs> It will. Trust me, my knees, my knees yeah, are no, are not the same around. pop in the <laughs> knees. I get it. Trust me. Um, so, Kevin, this is going to be year two ish, right? With uh, with Miami, after coming back from here, um, after joining this team last year, midway through, and I, I'd like to get your thoughts on the city of Miami yeah. itself, because you've lived kind of everywhere. You lived in Minnesota, then you spent a lot of time in Cleveland as well. Miami's a little different than than it those is. two. Uh, so j- just your overall thoughts on this city. Um, I-, I don't know exactly where uh, where it is you're living, and we don't want to share that information. <laughs> right. But I'm sure, you know, driving down here yeah. every day, uh, you- you've gotten a good uh, flavor for what this city's about. Yeah, and I think uh, all the way around, from from the fans working your way to the the people, I've really enjoyed my time here. I think when I first got into the league, I didn't venture – too far out from the hotels and we had always stayed in Brickell, but understanding uh, the surrounding areas, even going up, uh, you know, a little bit north, a little bit south and the food, the culture, the art, the wine, the weather. I mean, it's, it's, it's really tough to beat. I, I, you know, I live in between New York and and here in the, uh, the off season. So, and I spent nine off seasons in LA and I always feel like everybody has, a certain gravitational pull to, to one place. And everybody has the wrong idea about each place too. I mean, people say, oh, I could never live in New York or LA is too much. It's the traffic or, you know, Miami with, with the weather and the traffic, et cetera, et cetera. Somebody always has something to, to say if they had never lived there. Right. But now actually being here and living here, I have a whole new appreciation for Miami and I already loved it. So playing here is, has really been special like you said my two ish this is my yeah. my my second year i really feel like this i mean it is my first full year i get to go through my first full training camp i think my love and appreciation for uh the miami heat and their rich history is has already been there even before i got here yeah. but now being here playing here living here all things considered it's it's really a special place yeah and i mean you've played with the best of the best literally uh, so I, I don't imagine you get not starstruck but one of those like moments where you're like oh wow like that's somebody I I grew up admiring but um has that happened for you you know coming here to the heat because you've spoken so highly about this organization and when you joined this this organization you know you you couldn't have spoken higher about it but uh you know seeing Pat Riley I imagine for for somebody who like you loves the game and, and grew up loving the game uh, that that had to have been a pretty cool moment. Yeah, and I mentioned that that rich history, but that extends beyond just uh, the Miami Heat in, in general. Like right. the fact that Pat landed here. Uh, obviously, Mickey got him uh, here back in the day. Uh, there's Zoe, who we see around all the time. Yeah. That's amazing. Former players, you know, Dwayne always around. Uh, best Miami Heat player ever. Um, you know, CB having a relationship with him, obviously Braun, uh, just, I mean, the list goes on and on. It's just a special place. Uh, like you mentioned, a rich history. Um, you walk down championship alley, you, you see how they were able to, you know, the biggest plays, the moments, how they're able to, to hang banners and and lift the Larry O'Brien trophy. It just gives you a, a certain feeling like you could walk eyes closed or blindfolded into our locker room and into this arena. And it re- really makes you feel something every time you step in it. So I think that's, that's what continues to strike me is no matter how many times you enter this space, it's sacred. You mentioned Dwayne Wade. Did you see the video of him going viral? He hit that, that whole, I want to see the ball go in. <laughs> I want to see the ball go in. You so know, you're, I, you're, you're calling, you're, you're calling he, maybe. I'm, you're call, calling I'm maybe. calling a very strong maybe because he's <laughs> so talented and any, you know, it's just, he's, he's an athlete, anything and a, and a true athlete, anything that he touches, it just, you know, it kind of seemingly turns to gold. So, but I saw the swing look beautiful. I saw the trajectory of the ball look beautiful, but that hole is so t- I've played that hole before twice. It is so hard. So if he really, if he really did knock it down, first of all, kudos to him, but crazy crazy respect that is not an easy drop you know you have to club down a little bit what was the wind you know what was just so many elements play into that shot 
And part of it is jealousy too. If he yeah. did actually do it, I'm I'm very very jealous. Never had a hole in one, and to do it there on that hole, and he said he had been waiting to play it. Yeah. Tip of the hat. Crazy. I mean, more than the tip of the hat. It, it just respect. Yeah, that's why, uh, as you mentioned, the greatest heat player of all <laughs> Truly, time. Yeah. Um, before I let you go, I'm sure you've either already been asked this or will be asked this a million times. Uh, 22's new look. Uh, your your thoughts? I I grew up. Um, you know, I was born in '88, so I grew up in that like emo grunge oh tell me kevin love uh, had an emo phase please I tell me no i did not have an emo phase oh, but I, I you know what's funny i always <laughs> like i I, did, I wouldn't say i listened to the music but i at the same time did and i always you know found a connection with the the kids that were listening to yeah. that so I, w- I always found it fun and funny but i you know jimmy likes to do stuff for <laughs> For media day, as we've seen uh-huh. before, and this just, uh, you know, he's he's certainly wearing it, for lack of a better term. Yeah. So, uh, Jimmy's going to Jimmy. Yeah, Jimmy's going to Jimmy. Jimmy is going to Jimmy. Um, spaghetti and meatballs, awkwardly transition to that. Would you ever order spaghetti and meatballs in an Italian restaurant? That's very Italian-American. Some spag and meatballs. Boom. Um, but if it were Mario Carbone's meatballs, Mario's meatballs from Carbone, I would do that. But spaghetti meatballs, probably not. Like the dish itself. Can I can I ask why you brought that up? Do you really want to know? I mean, uh, what a really smooth transition there. <laughs> yeah. So give, give it to me. I, I work, uh, aside from my heat responsibilities, yeah. I work middays or afternoons with uh, the Hawk and Crowder show on QAM, okay. the Heat's radio affiliate. And uh, Mark Hawkman is a child at heart, even though he's like 60 years old. Yeah. And he orders spaghetti and meatballs when he goes to Italian restaurants. And I've maintained that any Italian restaurant yeah. that has spaghetti and meatballs on their menu outside of the kids' menu is not an authentic Italian right. restaurant. It's one of those things, if you have to bring your kids, you have to have it, you know, it's on the menu, you can bring them. If not, they're like, okay, what, what are they going to eat? But you would never order that. You, you would never order, never that. order that. Yeah, it's almost like uh, uncultured in yeah. a way to order that well, you as would, an adult. If you're like, all right, let's see what they have on the menu beforehand, and it's an Italian restaurant through and through, and they have spaghetti and meatballs, you wouldn't go there. Kevin Love, we don't just look alike a little bit. I, I think we just we just became best friends. Um, have you ever eaten a McRib? A McRib, I've never had. I have had plenty of McDonald's in my time, especially when the Monopoly game was going on. <laughs> Boardwalk and Park Place, never, you know, you, got, never you, got the you two. Got, you got robbed on that whole Monopoly scheme, I right? did. Yeah. Well, by the way, what a great documentary. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. What, what a what a scheme they had yeah. going on. Yeah. Respect. I mean, <laughs> sometimes you get got and you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah like, I got got. okay. They had something going there, pretty special. But no, never had a McRib. Nobody here has had a McRib. No, nobody in the Heat jerseys had a McRib. You guys are too healthy, I think. A little yeah. too healthy. I mean, if you want to talk about all time most processed foods, yeah, McRib is right up there. So good. I don't even know what they just like injected. Yeah, yeah. so good, man. Is it Oof. okay? Um, and uh, post career. <laughs> Finally, yeah, don't don't eat any of that, and then this interview gets leaked, and then exactly. Pat Riley they know and Coach exactly Bo why will never let me filling back in this out building. my jersey, right? Um, finally, two quick golf questions because you clearly are, are very passionate about the game. Uh, is miniature golf fun? Would would you consider that a fun activity? I just missed two putts. I think that's one of the yeah. things when like you, you know, you don't have enough. I mean, I don't know how much a round of miniature golf is, but like that's where you go on like a date in middle school, high school. Right. If you even go on dates in middle school. Yeah. You know, but would you a, consider it a fun activity even in middle school or high school? Or is it more like you're just doing it because it's something you think is fun and then by the third hole you're like, oh my God, I, I can't wait for this to be over. Yeah, I mean, I think rate of play is huge. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it, it's you like... You drop a rate of play on somebody at miniature golf. Yeah, okay, rate of play, rate of play. You know, if they have kids and it's taking a long time, it's like if you're... An adult, and you can have an adult beverage, and the rate of play is great. I think it's really fun. But if you know you're waiting on a couple foursomes, and no disrespect, but they have kids and they're playing slow and trying to figure it out, then I want nothing to do with it. As somebody who plays golf, if I told you, "Yeah, I'll meet you at the course. Just got to go grab my sticks," referring to my clubs, mm-hmm. would you? No, I thought I, I, I caught. Yeah, that. would uh, w- would you just immediately be put off by that statement? No. All right. No, I mean, I just, you know, everybody has, you know, it's like part of the, the golf vernacular at this point. People just it, say that. I'm going to go grab my sticks. It's like, all right, fine. 
Fine. Kevin, you have no idea how unbelievable this interview went just for my own purposes oh, on the show. I mean, you really have no idea. So glad. Can yeah. I just be done after this too? <laughs> Kevin Love, thank you. Appreciate you.